Hello everybody, my name is Linda. If you are new, welcome to the channel. We are going to be talking about my experience at Summer Nights Online Charity Con. This is a con that it was donating to charity, so the tickets were cheap and you just paid basically nothing for each table almost, unless you wanted to do a reroll. So basically how it worked was rerolls were like five to twenty dollars depending on the GM. And there was multiple games being played, like the normal stuff that people know all about, like Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu, different things were going on every day of the event was like three days. And there was two games in particular that I wanted to talk about that were not talk about a lot and I feel like they deserve a little bit of notoriety. So the first game that I want to talk about is The Witch is Dead. This is a one page RPG created by Grant. You might know the games that have been played because Critical Role had played a couple of them. It was Crash Pandas and it was also uh, Honey Heist. They did like three episodes of Honey Heist and they did a, one episode of Crash Pandas. And this is the same person who made The Witch is Dead. I know why a lot of people are not going to have this on their streaming channel or whatever because literally the storyline, the plotline is you walk up and you find your witch is dead, you are familiar, and there's a group of familiars, and your object of the game is to kill the witch hunter and get the eyes and bring them back to try to revive your witch. So if you were watching this and you were GMing Comfort Graffiti, thank you so much. They did an amazing job. It was a great fun time all around. Basically, I loved the whole premise of the game and I loved the way you GMed. It was so much fun. To the people who were in the group, and you also did a great job of keeping it fun as well, um, I loved that you had multiple ways and options of, based on the dice rolls, how anything was going to end up. So if you rolled a d10, you found out how your village was going to be. It could be something like they're having a festival, they could be having a, a party going on, or they could be very hostile and ready for you, could be empty, could be different things like that. And one thing I hope that if you are watching uh, Comfort Graffiti, did we roll a one? Because I want to know, because the Witch Hunter was super uh, like strong and buff and would not like die. Um, so for those who don't know, we tried everything. We, we set the, the person on fire. We stabbed a couple times, shank shank a couple times. And there was multiple times where we did like different things and just like, the dude kept walking and I was like that's probably for my guesstimate was we got the one on the d10 so if you were there and you can confirm on the comments please let me know because <laughs> that would be hilarious I forgot to ask I did I forgot to ask when you know like we do our like end of wrap up for the one shot or the campaign I always forget to ask like what was the role and so hopefully you can help confirm that if you can so that is the one thing that I loved about this game and the RPGs that Grant makes is you can have a one shot and have fun for like two, three hours and conclude it. And even if you fail, it's still going to be a fun time. So definitely try The Witch is Dead. It's a great time for sure. The second one that I want to talk about was I played multiple games of this one. I played two days in a row and it's I was a teenage creature is what the game is called. It's kind of like a couple games put together, but think of like Buffy the Vampire Slayer where everybody is creatures or people pretending to be teenagers in the normal world. And you have episodes is what they are. It's basically you'll have an episode of something going on and then you go through and your objective of your character is on your character sheet. Could be like you want to leave the coven you're in, you want to leave the, the nest is for a vampire, leave the nest and go do something else. Could be you hope to uh, solve a mystery that's going on in the town. And the first one we played was kind of like a hodgepodge of everything put together. It was like multiple hunters, uh, witch hunters slash hunters in general, are trying to get rid of everybody and vampires in that town. And that one was all over the place. We had people going here, we had people going there. And then the second one was the one I really liked, and that was called Mall Mom. And basically, we had a spirit in the mall and was causing chaos and being like a poltergeist and you had to figure out why the person was there doing what they're doing and how to solve and get them to basically go to the light. 
And that one I really enjoyed. It was, it took you to a place of like, you don't know what's happening. You don't know if you're in the mall, what's going on. And it was a lot of like, a bunch of movies put together, like Jim Carrey's movie. Like, you don't know if everything is real. You don't know what is real, what's going on. You have a bunch of people, and it was based in Florida. So I really enjoyed that part. Like, because I used to live in Florida, for anybody who doesn't know, I used to live in Florida for a little bit. And it was funny to be like, having the person, Ninja Cat, if you're watching this, I did live in Florida and I knew about the Seminoles, I knew about all the stuff you're talking about, you know, the, the gators just chilling in the background, like, I used to walk my dogs and there would be just gators just everywhere just chilling. So I had a fun time knowing that there was kind of like what they do with the Simpsons, there's like a fake town in that area and you just know it's there, but you know for real it's not really there. And I had a good time with that one. So. If you ever are not sure, it is on drive through RPG as well. There is a free version, but it's not for 18 plus version. There is an 18 plus version because there's a couple characters that are sexual in nature. So if you're wanting to play the game, you can take out those characters and have just like the vampire, werewolf, your normal, like banshee, stuff like that. And then you can just make it your own game. But I do enjoy that one. So Ninja Cat, thank you for GMing. He did an amazing job as well. And I had fun. I had two groups of characters that one set of group didn't know what I was doing. And then it resolved itself and it kept going. Which I do enjoy as well. That my storyline that I did from the previous day, even though it's another one shot, carried over. So like he was like, yeah, do you want to carry your, your storyline over? I was like, hell yeah, let's do this. So if you are not sure if... It's your kind of style. It does more role playing than actually combat. If you're doing something, the name of the game is you have to invoke what is your feeling. So like if you're going to attack somebody, are you feeling fear, love, pride, passion? What are you feeling at that time? And so if, if it's not for you, I understand because there's a lot of people that just like, I want to play D&D Pathfinder and I want combat. I don't want role playing. Just, just give me a creature, throw it at me, stuff like that. This is more like Monster of the Week meets Monster Heart. So if you're liking those two kinds of games, it's blended together. And I, I love Monster of the Week. I play that all the time. And if you're into it, you can definitely try that out for sure. So I was a teenage creature. Gets a thumbs up. I definitely recommend it if you've ever seen it in the system in like a convention. Because I don't know if Ninja Cat's going to be playing a bunch of different like conventions check it out it, it it's just basically an episode of a tv show played out and you have to think collectively like how we can help each other and different things like that so i know for a fact that they might do this again next year so i will be joining the game again and i hope it's around the same time because it's right in the middle of a couple conventions and it's not too bad so if you are from the con thank you Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for hosting it. Thank you for keeping it in like online because I know a bunch of conventions stopped doing online. I'm not going to name them, but it was kind of sad to see that it's going away and all the online ones are just like fading away. So please, please, if you could keep the online going because not all of us can travel to Wisconsin and Cali and all the time go everywhere. So it's a blessing to keep these going. So if you see an online convention and you're not sure, it's still fun. You still play. You still do like Roll20. There's different convention like stuff connected, linked together. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, my thoughts, and anybody who I played a game with that I didn't talk about. Thank you as well for being awesome and keeping this con amazing. I am Linda the Gamer Gal. If you're new, please consider subbing to the channel and giving it a like before you roll out. I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Gal, she's here to amaze.